If you don't want to see the person anymore, then of course it's not the, the right object for the meditation. Somebody that avoids you, somebody that has a problem with you, somebody that at one point you were friends, now finished. Because you have harmed them or not fulfilled their needs. If you look at the situation that happened, we might think, oh, come on, this wasn't so big. Why can't we just forget about it? From your perspective, that's how it looks. And we're hoping to be forgiven. Not necessarily with words, because it's not so nice to hear. Oh, you have done this and this, but I will forgive you. We don't like to hear that we harm other people, is it? But now the question is, do you signal your pain of being rejected to the other person? Do, do you signal that pain in a way to say, yes, it's my responsibility, I know I hurt you, but I also hurt because of that. Are we honest about this? Or even more difficult, how ready are we to go to the person and say, I know I have harmed you. Is that easy? Even if it's a small thing. We always come up with kind of an excuse or an explanation. I did it because whatever. Or we say, I'm sorry if I have harmed you. That signals that, oh, you shouldn't feel hurt. Are you not a bit afraid of that person that they might use it against you? How do you look at this other person? With fear? Or with compassion? Or even with anger? Because they are responsible for the bad feeling that you have. So can you, before you go and face that other person, just forgive yourself for having done that action? Having said the word, or the words, or neglecting the person, without any excuses, just to say, I forgive myself for having been inattentive, selfish, I know how it feels 
when I have harmed somebody. And now it's a quarter to 12. So this is a good occasion, those who go and help in the kitchen. Then you can do this on your own. You just turn the situation around. So those who very kindly agreed to help with the kitchen, they can just quietly get up and go to the kitchen. Thank you very much for helping. And the others, it's none of your business, so we continue with the meditation. So you turn it around, now you are the victim. And again, you look at your feelings. How do you feel as the victim? Do you feel that the other one might feel pain of having harmed you? Are you still so convinced that he or she did it on purpose? Can you put yourself in the other person's shoes? This is the first step of exchanging ourselves for others. You know how it feels when you don't behave in a friendly way from the situation before. Can you just take into consideration that this person who has harmed you experiences pain because of that? Just a possibility. Even if they don't signal it, because we don't signal it either, do we? Imagine the situation, they're coming and they're saying, I am sorry. I have harmed you. Really play that through. How do you behave? How do you feel? If it's getting too much, then just you know, go into the space again, think about your own goodness, the Dalai Lama, the Buddha, God, Jesus. Don't push anything. Okay, so we really want to hear the other person admitting that they have harmed us. But then what do we do with this? Just observe, yeah, don't manipulate anything. Don't push, don't force. Try to sit with a straight back so that your chest is open. There's no real victims and no real aggressors in that game, so don't let the ego come in again. Just observe, just be honest. That's what these reflections are for, that we experience on a very direct level how confused and how distorted we are. We think we're like this, we discover, oops, maybe not. It's painful. 
But that pain we have to see so that it can heal and we make a conscious decision to change, to transform. So we could think, for example, whenever that person is ready to come and ask for forgiveness, I will give it unconditionally. Then you are free. Only then. But you have to think this thought many, many, many times. Because unconsciously we were thinking many times, I will not forgive. I want to keep that power of the victim. So just try it out. Can you say to, the, to this person, I know you hurt it because you harmed me. But I forgive you. Or whatever words you want to say to that person. And then we go back to ourselves, using the same words kind of thing. Whatever I've done to others, the harm knowingly or unknowingly, I forgive myself. Because I'm pretty sure most of you, if you could repeat the situation, you would behave differently. Try to feel the forgiveness, the space, the openness. We're not perfect. Nobody is. It's okay. We all make mistakes. We all hurt each other. It's not such a big thing. Whatever I have done, hurting others, knowingly, unknowingly, I forgive myself. And then to help that action of forgiving, we can generate loving kindness. And we always start with ourselves. To give ourselves the right to be happy, to be free, to be open. First we need to have a wish that it is so. So you just take your future self and you think, may I be safe? May I be protected from physical and mental harm? strong, as healthy as possible, free from fear, loving and peaceful. I 
may be able to live my life with joy and ease. And then you think about a friend. You know, we have so many friends and we focus so much on these very few who have harmed us. It becomes so important. We totally forget how many people are kind to us, don't harm us, like us. So we think about them, it should be easy there. You put them in the space in front, so you feel their presence. You can always invoke them. You're never alone. You know them. You're connected to them. So think about them. That will open up your heart. We think, may you be safe. May you be protected from physical and mental harm. May you be strong, healthy, free from fear. Loving and peaceful. Enjoy that feeling. Connect with it. It's thanks to them that you have these sensations, these feelings, because they allow you to love them. Isn't that wonderful? try to open up our heart also by thinking, well, at the moment I don't know them so well, but everybody that I call my friend at one point, I didn't know them. I had the same kind of uninterested, uninterested interest in them. You know, people in the supermarket, people here who clean the rooms, People who drive trains, buses, people in the hospitals, people clean the streets, people who work in IT offices so that we can use computers, tablets, phones, etc. So many beings have to do their job properly so you can enjoy the life that you have and you feel lonely. What an illusion! We're all connected, and we all want the same thing. You think about all these people that we might not even know, but day after day work for our well-being. Everything we consume, everything we put out in our body comes from there. Don't feel guilty, okay? but develop loving kindness so that when we meet them, we show respect, natural respect, open heart. And when you meet them, you can have that same wish immediately, then. May you be safe. May you be protected from physical and mental harm. May you be strong, healthy, loving, free from fear, and peaceful. Okay. 
and may everybody be able to live their lives with joy and ease no matter, no matter what the situation. So for those who eat, again, it's not to make you feel guilty, but if you walk in the boiling sun, then you think, hmm, the people who grew these vegetables, probably they're working the whole day in the sun. And then you say thank you. And before you eat, you make your, whatever the food is, it doesn't matter. Food is there to keep us alive and to nourish the body. Food is nourishment. It's not a source for pleasure. If you're happy, every food is pleasure. If you're unhappy, not even the best food is pleasant. So it's how simple it is. So one thing is you have a duty, you have a duty to look after your happiness because then you can help the world who is very aggressive and very divided and all these kind of things. And you have a duty to enjoy your food. Because imagine all the effort, it's hard work. And at one point somebody said, oh, I have my own garden. Oh, come on, it's like, you know, isn't it hard work to work outside? Yeah, I know somebody sitting here who works outside. So, Please, at least enjoy the food, because otherwise their whole effort is for nothing. How would you feel? You put a lot of effort into making a dish, and somebody says, yeah, it was nice, thank you. Well, you know, like not caring, or even throwing it away. And then the food becomes really delicious. This is the nice thing. You look at your food and you think, wow, so many beings have created this food. And then, then you feel the natural spaciousness of your heart, because you need to put them in. Then you have depression, why, you know? It's like, yeah, wow, thank you. Then, Mother Earth, the rain, the wind, the sun. If these, what's happening now, they're not in balance anymore. Goodbye, humanity, you know? So then we make a promise again. I will not take more than I need from you. I will use these resources that come from you. All of it that keeps us alive comes from Mother Earth. All of it. Absolutely everything. If she would have a human mind, I tell you, she would, long ago, she would have stopped treating us, you know? Absolutely no gratitude, only take, take, put chemicals in so that she can give more, and wow, this and that. Flowers, you know, also. If you go and look at the flower fields, where they come from, it's hard work. And it's risky work also, because you don't know how they will come out. Is anybody going to buy them? Yes, no. We all forget, you know, all becomes mine. You see the, when you see these lovely flowers, you go, oh, lovely flowers. It seems as if they've just, they, you know, came out of existence, because, sorry, just like that. Doesn't it? That's how it appears. Do you see the conditions behind this? And it's not just the flowers, they're also sticking in something, then there's a base, then there's water. It's many things. No, I was open in particular when he, well, he does, it's not so much he thinks about the people who made his food, but he thinks about offering the food to the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas so that those beings who made the food get the merit, the positive energy, the karma. So when he's on the plane, the food comes, 
And then he starts, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so the stewardess came, or the flight attendant came, she said, I'm sorry, you know, he's still holding it and offering it or on his tray. And she says, I'm really sorry, I have to take away the tray, we're going to land. And so um, Roger said, oh, please, he hasn't even touched it. Rinpoche takes the tray and says, oh, it's okay, I offered it, you can have it. So for Rinpoche, the food is there to be offered to the Buddhas, not to be, not even to be eaten. We don't have to go to that extreme, okay? Because it would be food waste again. So please take whatever you can eat on the plate. Please train yourself, even if there's in abundance, not to take more than you can eat. You can always go back. We learned that as children. It seems that this is, has gotten forgotten a bit. I have to say, I saw it last night. How much food got thrown away. I want you to feel bad now. No, really, because gosh, we're so unconsiderate about, you know, about using resources. Why we don't do? One, you know, doesn't make a difference. We make a huge difference in the world. And we can change. This is it. I don't want to scold you, I don't want to educate you, but I want you to become more careful, please, about the environment. Because the environment deserves it. <laughs> I see you're all totally bored with what I'm saying. Um, but I'll say it in any way because I think it is important that you hear these things. So, just remember one thing when you go there and eat, if you do eat. For those who do not eat, rejoice with the ones who are eating, that they're having the food. Fantastic, then you don't suffer. You know, be happy that you have the capacity, the strength and the courage not to eat. Not everybody has. Don't become arrogant. And also think, tonight, oh, I will have much more pleasure than them. That's the good thing about not eating. When you have, when you're really hungry, you can eat whatever it is. It is so good. By having all these varieties and eating more and more and more. And then why do we eat so much or too much? Because we're looking for the pleasure, but we don't find it because we have too much stuff. So we're going the wrong way. We're not getting the pleasure, the environment gets exploited, the resources finish. Man, and you're not calling that confusion? It's total confusion. So please enjoy the food. And before you eat it, you say thank you, those going, you know, just thank you to the universe. And if you have an object of reference, as we did yesterday, when we said, you know, at the beginning yesterday, I said, uh, who is your refuge? If you have an object of refuge, you offer it on behalf of all the beings and elements who created that food. And then you enjoy it, without guilt, without anything. And then, thank you for this food, may it become medicine for my body, may I use my healthy body or more or less healthy body in the best way possible to benefit others. Then even eating becomes spiritual practice. And it will slowly, slowly change your mind and you will see, you will not be picky anymore. Every because we, we, we kind of be picky and not eat, not liking this, not liking that, not knowing what to take, blah, blah, blah. This comes from attachment karma. Yeah, when you eat something out of attachment, you don't get what you want because you don't get lasting satisfaction. So then you create the karma not to find pleasure anymore in the things and it has to be more and more refined and more and more special and more and more this. Yeah. If you can, if you offer the food, or if you have a problem with food also, you know, if you have a food problem, either eating too much or kind of get, going vomiting and these kind of things, offering the food kind of heals these tendencies if you offer it first. And then you will eat normally with a lot of pleasure and have time for more important things in life than just creating more cookery books and more menus and more this and more that. It doesn't have to be special to be able to keep us alive. 